Well, hello dragons and welcome to this instructional video from lesson 11, part two, economic development. The main idea behind this economics lesson is economic development is the degree to which a nation has developed its industrial, service, technical, and agricultural sectors. With that in mind, by the end of watching this video, you will be able to identify the common characteristics of developing nations, and explain how scarcity of resources can affect a developing nation. Now that the outcomes for this lesson have been shared with you, let's get started. In the world today, there are nearly 200 nations, all at different stages of economic development. Economic development is a broad term that includes the size and sophistication of a nation's industrial, service, technical, and agricultural sectors. The industrialized nations of the world, which economists generally classify as developed nations, have a high level of industrial and technical expertise, as well as a variety of economic institutions, such as banking systems, stock markets, and trade networks. The World Bank an international economic organization, has classified some 25 nations as being high income or highly developed. The United States, Canada, Japan, most nations in Europe, and several other nations in Asia and the Middle East are among the developed nations. The combined populations of the developed nations make up about 14% of the world's population. Economists classify the remaining nations of the world as developing nations. The majority of the world's population lives in these developing nations. Developing nations are characterized by low per capita gross domestic product, or GDP, limited resources or inefficient use of resources, rapid population growth rate, and dependency on agriculture as the main form of production. Per capita GDP, a widely used indicator of the standard of living, is the average dollar value of a nation's annual total output for each person. The per capita GDP is calculated by dividing a nation's total GDP by its total population. Economists subdivide developing nations according to income level based on per capita GDP. In the early 2010s, the per capita GDP of low-income developing nations was $1,025 or less. For lower middle-income countries, per capita GDP ranged between $1,026 and $4,035. Upper middle-income countries' per capita GDP ranged from $4,036 to $12,475. In contrast, the developed nations had a per capita GDP of more than $12,476. Scarcity and misuse of resources in developing nations are problems that are caused by both natural and historic forces. Natural forces have affected the distribution of resources through climate and the availability of water resources, mineral deposits, and arable or productive land. For example, in Libya, Mali, Niger, and other countries that lie across the Sahara in Africa, less than 4% of the land is arable, mainly because of the lack of rainfall. On the other hand, in much of tropical Africa, where rainfall is plentiful, the soil is drained of its fertility and is unsuitable for most types of agriculture. Historical forces that have negatively affected the distribution or use of resources include people's decisions and actions. For example, many developing nations were once European colonies. From the 1500s to the mid-1900s, the European powers used colonies to supply agricultural products and raw materials for Europe's industries. In turn, the European powers made only limited investments in colonial economies, transportation networks, and education systems. Colonialism often slowed economic development in much of Asia, Africa, and Latin America. The population growth rate, 
or the annual percentage of increase in a nation's population, is higher in most developing nations than it is in the developed nations. The population growth rate of developing nations is therefore nearly three times higher than the rate of developed nations. Some experts argue that many statistics downplay population expansion in developed countries. The United States, for example, increases by more than some 2.6 million people each year. About one-third of this increase is a result of immigration, but the United States has one of the highest birth rates among developed nations. Other experts point out that population growth is not the result of higher birth rates. In fact, world birth rates declined from 5.3 children per mother in 1950 to 2.2 children per mother in 2021. Instead, advances in health care, hygiene, and sanitation have enabled people to live longer, so that although fewer people are being born to each mother, more are living to adulthood and consuming more goods and services. The world's population in 2024 is more than 8 billion and is projected to exceed 10 billion after the year 2100. Most of this increase will occur in developing nations. Many people in developing nations still must produce their own food in order to survive. In subsistence agriculture, families grow just enough to meet basic needs and do not produce crop surpluses to trade. Most developing nations, however, have been able to produce surpluses of agricultural products to sell in international markets. These surpluses are usually in commercial plantation crops, such as peanuts from the Gambia, coffee from Colombia and Brazil, bananas from Honduras, cocoa from Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire, and sugar from Cuba and the Dominican Republic. Generally, these crops are raised solely for export by the producers, who are usually wealthy landowners. Subsistence agriculture reinforces a traditional lifestyle because people earn their income from the land, which tends to isolate them from the outside world. Tradition often plays the most important role in shaping religious beliefs, the size of families, and the role of women and children in society, all of which affect the economies of developing nations. So that's the way it is with Lesson 11, Part 2, Economic Development. At this point, you should know that low per capita GDP, limited resources, rapid population growth, and the use of a traditional economic system are the common characteristics of developing nations, and scarcity and misuse of resources in developing nations are problems typically caused by natural and historical forces. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to have the entire catalog of economics videos available at your fingertips. Click the subscribe button, then click the follow bell to receive notifications as to when the channel is updated. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in class, dragons. See ya!